Hey, welcome to the Aramir Roundtable. Uh, today is the 5th of April, 2023, and we have a, a special guest, uh, Charles from Option Traders Assistant, and Steve Gantz, who you all know has been um, teaching some classes and running some trade alerts with us for a while. Uh, Steve's a well known and a good trader, and helping Charles kind of uh, ramp up Option Traders Assistant to be a really uh, high level uh, option analysis program. So um, we're always happy to have other alternatives besides the tried and true option view and option net explorer so it's nice to see some new blood in the in the neighborhood so to speak um, but before we get started just a quick disclosure Aram is not a broker dealer investment advisor it's for educational purposes only option features bonds and currencies and crypto all about risks are not suitable for all investors past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results if you want to read the whole thing uh, pause the recording or go to the bottom of any of our web pages um, so with that I will stop sharing my screen and I don't know Steve or Charles uh you know which one of you wants to share your screen do you want to do it steve or uh well, yeah well what you your preference charles um if you want to give a, the high level view and kind of an introduction that'd be great and then i can walk through how i use it or we can start mm. off with me either way well let me just uh say uh to start with welcome everybody and uh grateful for this opportunity to show you what we've been up to and i'll give you just a tiny little bit of background my background is in software development and I've many years ago started learning options trading, and uh, I don't have the lifelong history in options trading that some people do, but I'm learning as fast as I can. And I started out trying to trade and keep track of my trades in a spreadsheet. I made my own spreadsheet, and I got really frustrated with that. And I said, I can do better than this. So I started developing some software to help analyze, keep track of the trades and things like that, take care of the routine calculations if i always wanted to calculate where my stop should be or my adjustment points or what have you uh, doing that over and over again I, I got very tedious and it started getting better and better and i started realizing probably some other people would like to see this too so i have uh consulted with a lot of experienced traders and gotten advice on what what's needed and uh keep improving it. And of course, I'm continuing to improve it all the time. So that's a little bit of a quick background on it. I've known Steve now for uh, over a year and a half, and he's been using the software, has really uh, gotten into it, and has given me a lot of uh, a lot of uh, suggestions and advice on what could be improved. And we've been doing some, working through some of that. And I guess Steve uh, is a really great guy. He apparently needs no, no introduction in this community. So uh, he's offered to kind of walk through how he's using the software and he's got a lot of good examples to show. So take it away, Steve. All right. Well, nice to see everyone here. And uh, I obviously, oh, obviously love the uh, love the uh, Aeromir uh, group. So um, uh, always happy to share things here. So let me get my screen shared. And <clears throat> I'm assuming you guys are now seeing the option traders uh, screen. Uh, if somebody could maybe just ping yeah, me. see the dashboard. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes. So this is the uh, the dashboard page, and I'm going to give you kind of a high level walkthrough. Uh, Charles, of course, can provide a lot of detail and maybe answer some questions that uh, I won't know how to answer. As Charles mentioned, I first reached to him. Uh, about a year and a half ago, what he was working on was kind of in its infancy. Um, I had been a user of Option Net Explorer. I'd used Option View a little bit in the past. Um, and I, I've always said that I would love a program that was web based. As everyone knows, those other two programs are uh, computer based. And at least in the case of, well, I think in both of them, they require a PC and they require an Intel chipped. PC, uh, which isn't my world. I've always been a Mac guy myself. So for a couple of reasons, it was always a little frustrating to have to go to those programs. And it was also frustrating for me not to have something that was web-based. So when I saw what Charles was doing, it's like, holy smokes, man, this is this is awesome. And so he and I talked about 18 months ago and it kind of you know slipped off my radar. And then I reached back to him back in November and saw what he had developed at that point. And I'm like, wow, I want to start using this. So I made the transition back in November um, uh, to Option Traders Assistant. I use it for managing all of my trades at this point, uh, with the exception of my covered calls, and we're going we're working on that. But um, 
So all of my butterfly trades, all the stuff I do with my students and my classes, et cetera, is all run through Option Traders Assistant. So I'm going to kind of just walk everyone through the high level uh, page by page, the dashboard up here. Um, so the very first page here is the dashboard. The dashboard kind of gives you a rundown. Now I've got three accounts I'm trading in. And this kind of shows me a quick overview of all of the trades across all of the accounts. And you can see we've got some trades in here that are up, you know, $13,000 or so, um, you know, $1,400, $1,000, et cetera. And we've got a couple that are down a little bit. I mean, that's the trading world. That's the way it goes. So, but I can very quickly and easily see an overview of my trades. Now, one of the things I want to point out, the header here is black. On some pages, you're going to see the header is black. On some pages, you're going to see it's green. So when the header is black, that information is static. It is not updating live in real time. It snapped a snapshot when I opened it, and that gives me the information. And that shows me like my month to date. So I'm up $131 in closed trades this month. Obviously, we haven't closed out much. I've got 34000 in unrealized gains this month. I can click on this, and it will show me those details of, in this case, the closed trade, or I can look, you know, last month, see results from last month, um, et cetera. So it's quick and easy to kind of go through, see all of my trades. We're going to look at reporting functions in a short bit, but I just wanted to give people kind of that, that overview of, of how you can quickly uh, look at what Charles was uh, asserting, which is, um, originally building out a spreadsheet. And then from that spreadsheet, um, being able to track all the trades. So anyhow, on any of these trades, I can come in and I can look at the details of them. It gives me all the specs on the trade, how much I've spent in commissions on it so far, um, you know, all, all of the specific details. Now we're going to see more in a moment, but this is the high level view of the dashboard. I will tell you that I don't use the dashboard a lot myself, um, but different traders, of course, are going to trade differently. So now I'll come to the monitor tab. And again, keep in mind, I'm trading across three accounts. I have a lot of trades open. Um, these are the three different accounts here. So the monitor, you'll notice the top bar is green. So this information is updating live real time. It's kind of the same look and feel, if you will, um, that the dashboard had. But again, this is actually broken out by account. So these are the trades that are currently in my class options trading account. These are trades that I have in an IRA. These are trades that I have in a different account yet. So I can come in, I can look across all of these and see uh, trade by trade, I can see that breakout. And then also I can have paper trades open or I can have proposed trades, which I'll touch on a little bit, but I may uh, have Charles kind of elaborate on that a little bit later. But pro 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 blah, blah, blah. proposed trades are trades that I'm interested in possibly opening at some point. They're things that I modeled up um, and I can circle back to them. And I can also build trade plans around them, which is a really cool feature. And I myself am just kind of learning more about how to use that. So that's the monitor tab. Let me open the little chat box here too. If uh, if anybody has questions, feel free to um, drop them into the chat box. And if I can't answer them, which I probably won't be able to, we'll bring Charles in on it. But uh, then I'm going to go to the main page that I live in. So this is my uh, this is the graphs page. Again, different people are going to use the software in different ways. But for me, this is where I live. This is my um, uh, to talk in Tom's vernacular, most likely, this is my instrument cluster on my airplane, if you will. This gives me just a quick glance at all of my open trades. Um, again, broken out by account. So these are uh, trades that I have open, for example, in an IRA account. These are designed to be larger hedge trades. Most of them are butterflies because that's predominantly what I like to teach. Um, and again, I could just very quickly look through account by account and just have a high level view of my trades. I can see the details on these. Like I can see at a glance right here, 
that this trade uh, has a, a negative 9.2 delta. Um, it's got a 95 theta. It's got a vega of negative 131. And again, this is a green bar. So this is updating real time. So um, and so again, just kind of gives me a quick high level glance at my trades. And then you can also have a custom view. So I happen to have the custom view set up right now for our class trades, our butterfly class trades. So these are the current open trades that are in our class. Now I can set this up to slice and dice this however I want. If I wanna see just my open calendar trades or just my open butterfly trades or whatever, I can come in and again, set this up in a multitude of different ways to see very specific things. Now, a couple other really cool things, and Charles has been so responsive um, at adding little things along the way. One of the things we talked about when he had asked about different ideas and suggestions was um, being able to somehow see what I have orders out on. So you can see this little icon right here that tells me that I have an order out there on that butterfly. So I know that on this trade, I have floated an order out there. If that order were to be filled, it's going to change this butterfly to be this dashed line configuration, okay? So that order is just setting out there waiting. Um, we're gonna dig deeper into these in a moment, but I'm just wanting to show you kind of the high level. This one has an order out there as well. This order is literally just to thin out one of the two double calendars in this trade. And if that were to fill, we can see the dashed line tells us where, you know, what our diagram is going to look like after that. This one, I have modeled an adjustment, but you can see there's no order icon up here. So I've modeled an adjustment that I might want to make. I just haven't gone the, uh, through the next step of sharing the order with students so that they can um, uh, go ahead and float that order out there too. I'll probably do that in the next day or two. But I've already modeled something that I like as a potential adjustment. This one over here, again, I can see here that uh, I have an order out there. If that order is filled, it's going to do a exactly what we wanted on this trade, which is to thin it out just a little bit, just locking in a little bit more profit. Uh, this one's got an order floating out on it. This one's got an order floating out on it. So um, I, I like to have orders out there that achieve my objective of locking in a little bit higher profit, specifically uh, when I'm trading RUT. And that's something that we, I don't normally trade RUT, but we did do a couple uh, class trades in RUT recently because of the higher volatility, and uh, particularly in rut with the wide bid ask spread, I always like to have an order out there because we've gotten some really good exits that I never would have envisioned that we would have gotten. So this is the high level dashboard before we dig down a little bit deeper into an individual trade. So let's just say I wanna dive deeper into one of these. Let's take a look at this rut trade, for example. There's two places I can go here. I can go to an analyze tab or an analysis tab, or I can go to the modeling matrix. Now, there's different reasons you might go to different places. And again, Charles may shed some light on that uh, when he kind of follows up here. I will tell you that I personally tend to use mainly the modeling matrix. Um, so if I open the modeling matrix, this is gonna look pretty similar, I think, to most people. This is very similar to what an option view uh, screen might look like, or very similar to what a um, an ONE screen might look like. And this shows over here, this shows my existing trade. This is currently showing this dashed line, what I have modeled here as a potential adjustment. If I wanna make a new adjustment or a different adjustment, I can simply clear that one out and I can come in and model up something different to see what that might look like. So let's just say I model something like that. Again, not suggesting that, that's not a proposed trade or anything like that. But if I model something and I want to save that as something to consider, I can simply save and I'm gonna call that adjustment to just to give it a name for right now. 
So I can model three or four different adjustments. Then when I come over here to what's called the analysis tab, I can go back and forth and kind of quickly compare a multitude of different adjustments that I'm considering. Now, I find this very, very valuable for um, my students because we can model up three, four, five different things. Some students might say something like, well, what if we did this? Well, I can model that up here too, and we can quickly click through all of the different variations that we might potentially look at. This little icon right here, by the way, tells me that there is an order already out there for this. I already have a working order to essentially thin this trade out a little bit. So if for some reason I wanna change that or delete it or whatever, of course I can do that. And then we can see, as you always can in uh, pretty much any program you're looking at, you can see what the uh, Greek variances are going to be in each of these different trades, should someone uh, put those out there. Um, this is built on the TDA API um, to the change over to Schwab. Uh, Charles, if you want to chime in on that, the, the question is with the um, TDA API, what might change once there's a Schwab API? So I don't know if you have any thoughts or, or uh, input on that, Charles. Well, not quite sure what to say. The latest uh, I've gotten is that we're going to get all the functions we need here, uh, including uh, ordering, streaming quotes, the works uh, in the new Schwab API. We uh, latest timeline, they're still working, of course, to make sure it's in good shape. And the latest timeline I've heard is that we will get access to it sometime this summer. And I think they said they're, they'll be starting to convert accounts uh, later in the fall or even the winter. So it, obviously the software depends on how the, how the uh, software testing goes and being sure it's working properly. So. Uh, and I will point out, in case anybody's interested, we're, we're, uh, we use the uh, TD Ameritrade's API, but we're also linked to uh, Tradier and E-Trade. And we are in development with Tastyworks and Interactive Brokers to use all of their APIs. So, and you can use them interchangeably. Uh, I mean, you know, at the same time, you can have accounts at different brokers and they all will show up together on, on the Option Traders system. Yeah, so that's a great point. So this is connected directly to, in my case, Thinkorswim. I don't even have to have my Thinkorswim platform open. Again, this is web-based. Uh, I was at a seminar a couple of weeks ago. I opened it up on my iPad. It worked just as slick as it does here. And Charles has even set it up to work directly from a mobile device, a phone as well. A couple other questions I see. Can we see multiple chains on the matrix? Yes. I'll show that to you in just a moment, Kieran. And it actually, in my opinion, is done... Uh, in a slicker manner than the other ones do. Um, and then Charles, this one's probably for you. It says zero DTE, zero DTE ready. Will this display intraday T0 lines like TOS? I'm assuming yes, but I don't know. I would say yes, we, we, we have made it work with, uh, with uh, zero DTEs. It'll show, it'll show the current, you know, the T, T plus zero line does update during, during the day. Um, it does not have a capability yet to advance like an hour to the future, uh, if that's what you're asking about. You see the T plus zero line as T plus zero, and you see the expiration line. Uh, so that, that, that much works, yes. Uh, okay. So hopefully that answers those questions. And then I will get back to displaying multiple uh, expirations here in just a moment, because that, that's a really cool uh, function as well. So what I did want to show here is this little camera piece. This is pretty cool too. It allows me to quickly and easily walk through an entire trade. Every time I make an adjustment to a trade, so if we go back to March 15th, this was my proposed entry into this trade. This is what I originally modeled up. I click it forward. This is my actual fill, okay? So you can see when I first modeled this, I modeled it and it was going to be $1.20 debit. My actual fill on this ended up being $1.25. Then I can just march forward here on April 3rd. I modeled this particular adjustment where I was raising the right wing here a little bit and then march this forward and I got filled. This was then my new, um, uh, my new position in the trade. 
And we can just march it forward and see every single adjustment that was made. And again, it's doing a snapshot every step of the way. So it's pretty nice from, from that perspective of being able to march through that entire trade. I can also see all the details here of the trade, every single adjustment, what all my stats are, things like that. You also have a separate journal here, so you can make notes about the trade as you're going through it, things along those lines. So again, this analysis page, I don't use quite as much. Um, uh, and you have the ability to scale a trade down. If I want to scale this trade back, I can simply hit this and it will ask me how many butterflies would I like to thin out? And I can select a number and enter an order from here. Again, for my purposes, I tend to do most of what I do from the matrix. It's just kind of where I grew up, if you will. Um, but other traders may do a totally, you know, they may use that analysis tab much more regularly. And I know Charles uh, really likes and uses the analysis tab. So as far as having a second um, expiration in this, let me go to uh, one of my trades that is maybe a calendar trade. That'll probably be a little better way to look at this. Uh, let's not do a proposed trade. Let's see, I think I got a live uh, double calendar here somewhere. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, here we go. So what's a little bit different here that I really like is if I need the extra expiration, well, it just kind of pops open on the side here. So it's easy for me to just bring in a second expiration. But unlike the other software that I'm aware of, um, the others, you they, they come in sequentially. And now that you have daily expirations on SPX and RUT, if I'm going to trade the 414 and, well, this is the 414, 417, but let's just say I'm going to trade the April 14th and then I want to trade the uh, May, you know, monthly expiration or whatever. I have to scroll across all of those different um, uh, months in order to get out to that May expiration. Uh, what Charles has done here is I can come and I can specifically select what expiration I want to show up here as my second expiration. So I find that to be really beneficial um, in looking at that. And then also in the matrix, you have a lot of other things you can put in here. Uh, this is one I had specifically mentioned to Charles that I find very helpful when I'm trading calendar trades or time spreads, and that's to see the actual P&L on each specific leg of a trade. So that's one of the many things I can select here. I can see the IV on the legs. I can see the extrinsic, intrinsic value. Uh, the open interest, um, bid ask spreads, all those types of things here. So again, when I'm trading time spreads, uh, time spreads, I find it very valuable to see the open P and L on the leg. So I can see, yeah, I'm down 77 cents on this leg, but I'm actually up, you know, 28 cents on this leg. So it, it just kind of gives me a quick glance and a way to uh, look at those things. So hopefully that answers the question on the time spreads. And then if I'm looking at a trade that doesn't have a time spread, it just closes up to where I'm really only seeing the one window here. And of course, I can make that window, you know, bigger, smaller, et cetera. So you have the ability to kind of move these around however you want. Um, on the matrix page here, I also can see a lot more detail about this trade by hitting this down arrow. I personally don't tend to use this very much um, myself but it is a lot of great information that's in there on this trade um, and kind of where we're at in this trade. It's got my existing trade here. It's got my proposed adjustment that's out there at this point to take one of these off. If I hit my proposed adjustment, this is what's gonna happen in the trade. Um, so again, a lot of, lot of details to help me in making my decisions. Um, of course, we can also come in and look at the um, uh, the DTE. I can march this forward just like you can in any trade to see my T0 line. I obviously marched it forward too far there because this expires next week. So I can march this forward and take a look at my, um, my T0 lines. And then I can also change volatility just as you can with most of the other modeling software that's out there. 
I can, of course, enlarge or shrink down my field of view here on these trades as well. Um, so that's pretty much how I use it. And again, I tend to live uh, right here in this graphs page. This is what is my 10,000 foot view on everything and um, helps me to identify when or where I might want to look at adjusting something. Now, I will also tell you that Charles has built in some great educational tools where I can map out my entire trade in advance, but we'll get to that in a minute here as we march through. Are there any questions that anyone has on this particular page? Again, this is this is my page, the graphs page. This is where I live. I see backtesting using broker historical data as a design primarily. I would say um, it's focused, and if Charles has any additional thoughts on this, he can chime in. That was one of the questions I asked him initially, because, of course, many of us are used to that in, for example, ONE. Um, but this is designed mainly to deal with uh, existing trades or live real time. And, oh, yeah, thank you, Karen. I'll show you more detailed reports in just a second. But um, uh, because, quite frankly, the back trading function like you have an ONE, that's built into, at least it's built into TOS. You can go to TOS on demand and you can do all of that stuff that you can do in ONE as far as back testing goes. So at this point, um, and, and unless Charles wants to elaborate, I think the answer to that one is there's really no need for it. That already exists somewhere else. Um, the T0 line on expiration day. Again, the T0 line does show up real time and it does uh, adjust tick by tick. So on an expiration day, that T0 line will be there and it will be ticking around um, unless uh, Charles indicates otherwise, but I believe it absolutely does. So that's, that's true. It, it does. Uh, okay. So report. So these are, well, let's, I'm going to take this, uh, you know, tab by tab here. So we'll get to reports in a minute. So this is the trading plan. So this is something that's a little bit newer to me because I was all about getting into the nuts and bolts of managing my trades, but this is gonna be very important for um, uh, students. So you can come in here and you can select a specific trade that you're interested in doing, like an at the money butterfly, for example. And you can say that I want to do at the money butterflies and SPX, I want them to be all put butterflies or iron butterflies or whatever. I want them to trade uh, on average at about 35 DTE. Um, I want them to be $50 wide or 50 points wide. I wanna do a 10 lot of them. And then you can come in and set all the details you might want as far as your profit target, the max loss you're willing to accept. When to take action, in other words, if certain things whether it's you know delta or or your pnl or whatever hits certain marks you're going to do certain things and then you can say when those certain things are hit this is what i'm going to do so a person could come in here and build out a complete detailed plan as to how they want to trade when they want to adjust how they want to adjust and when one of those conditions is hit, you'll get a notification that says, you know, hey, you asked me to tell you when uh, deltas exceed 10, you've exceeded 10 delta. Oh, well, what was I supposed to do? Oh, well, here's what I was going to do if this exceeded 10 delta. So you could have this plan totally saved, give it a name, and you can identify that I want to put this trade on every Friday. And on Friday, this trade will show up on your dashboard as a trade that you have said you want to make. And if you go and click on that trade, it will open it up in the matrix and have it all set and ready to go for you. So that's that's a pretty cool tool that I will be using more of. And again, toward the end here, Charles may have additional uh, insight into that, but uh, that's the plans. And the concept behind plans is that um, not only can students build their own plans, but I as an educator can come in and build a plan, or as you guys know with the boxcar trade or Amy's A14 or any of the other trades that have rule sets behind them, you can essentially build out the rule sets right in here, and then you'll get notified when those, those markers are hit. So Amy, for example, could come in and she could pre-build an A14 trade in here 
And then if you're one of Amy's students, you would be able to have access to Amy's A14 plan right here in Option Traders Assistant. She would share that with you for a subscription fee. And then you could enter the trade, be notified when certain conditions were hit, and it would already be pre-mapped out as to how you would adjust that trade. It does not automatically fire out the order, but it does let you know so that you can consider whether or not you want to put that order out at that time. Charles, anything you want to add in here on, on the plan concept? Yeah, well, the whole point of a plan is that it does a lot of the work uh, setting this up for you. So, uh, and if, if there's interest or time, I can actually demonstrate how you do that. When you click on the button, you, you the plan has specified how you set the trade up and the, the software will then go out and scan the option chains and find what you've asked for. So if you set up a, a, a 20 delta put credit spread, for example, it's gonna go out and, and for, for a certain number of days. It's gonna go out and find the nearest expiration, scan the chain and find the strike that is out of 20 delta and, and model selling that. And then you specify how far away you want your long. So it does, save you a lot of time and, and effort in scanning the chain for you and presenting a, a proposed trade that you can then uh, take forward. So here are some personal plans that I have kind of built out as I've been playing with this. So um, if I want to put on what I've called my SPX double calendar, which is a 14 day out, three days between the short and long, that's a trade that I, I trade fairly consistently uh, that I've been sharing with the students, et cetera. I can click on create trade as Charles had indicated, and there you go. It takes that entire trade, models it out for me, um, essentially sets it up ready to go. So now all I need to do, if I like this trade, um, I can send it out as is, or I can come into the matrix and maybe I want to tweak it a little bit, or I want to adjust uh, certain aspects of it. So that's how that's designed to uh, designed to work, is I can have all this pre-canned stuff that I can quickly and easily access. Because most traders, I think, tend to trade the same type of trade over and over. Uh, I mean, you may shift. You may shift from a broken wing butterfly to a flat butterfly, or you may shift from a 30-day um, a calendar to a you know one-week calendar. But we all kind of have some things that we're familiar with and comfortable with, and you can have those pre-built out here. So that's how the, um, uh, the plan function works. Then under the trade function, this I can get all my trade history here. I can see my alerts here. I can see open orders. I can import trades. So one of the first things I did back in November is I went and I imported some of my historical trades just to kind of see how that process worked. It was a very simple, easy process. Um, to go and select trades from uh, my TDA account and import those. So, um, so that was nice to have access to as well. Um, the reporting function. So let's just go to, I usually use the advanced portfolio performance. That's one that I happen to like. So this shows me, um, uh, I'll go to all closed trades since December 1st, which is really when I started using this full time. So this just kind of gives me a rundown of all my trades. And I've got a shareable link here that I can send out that trade diary to someone if I want. But it gives me all the stats of gains and losses and average days in trades and you know largest winner, largest loser. Uh, and this is just closed trades. So this is not anything that's currently open. All these different stats over here. Charles done a great job of anytime there's a question mark, you can hover over it. And it will give you details about what that means, uh, how that is designed to function. Um, and then I can also come in. So this is the list of these trades. I can see a bar chart, which gives me just kind of a snapshot analysis or a quick look at what do my winners look like compared to my losers. And any of us that are traders, we know that, hey, it's really important to have bigger winners than you have losers. So at a Quick glance, I can see that. Um, I can also look at the equity curve that's represented by these trades. So these are um, uh, all of my trades. If I look at class trades, I've got a separate slice and dice. So this is just for the trades um, that I've shared with students since the first. So, and again, come back, can take a look at this list, get all the details. Now these are smaller trades. Generally speaking, the trades we're trading in class, I, I like to keep the, uh, 
the maximum risk under $2,500. But I've got all those same stats that I can see here. On average, we're in a trade 12 days, um, biggest loser, biggest winner, all those, those stats and details. Um, any questions at all here on the reports page? Steve, another thing, the last button over there is what people always ask me, can I export this data myself? And that's what the last button is. If you want, you can export to your own spreadsheet and take all the data and slice it and dice it even further if you if you, if you you want to. Great point. I am not a, uh, a guru on, uh, on spreadsheets like Tom is. So that's something that I wouldn't do. You've done everything I need here, but that's a great point. Um, uh, equity curves, let's see, max margin used anywhere on this page. Um, I think that's a trade by trade thing, if I'm not mistaken, Charles. Do you have uh, a thought on that? Uh, yeah, well, the, the, the software does keep track of the max margin used in a given trade. Um, as far as through a history of trades, uh, we don't have that just yet. But, uh, Would that be the capital over here? Is that telling us? I capital mean, it... is is the amount of capital that was used in the trade. Um, okay, well, I think that was the question. So maybe maybe that answers it there. Um, okay. And then I see the next question: equity curve. So I'm not sure. I mean, the equity curve is the sum of all the closed. In this case, it's all the closed P and Ls. So it is basically all of these individual trades. If you took all these individual trades and put them all together sequentially, um, that's the results of them. Um, capital is the cost of VWB, for example. Um, Dave, I'm gonna. I'll let uh, at some point if you need clarity on that, maybe you can uh, reach to Charles and and try to figure that out. The the problem, at least what I found with margin is. Max margin is a number that varies dramatically depending on the type of account you have. If you have a portfolio margin account, the max margin that's used by that trade is going to be dramatically different. If you're trading in an IRA, it's going to be different than if you're trading in a Reg T account. Uh, if if I am understanding what you're asking, does that make sense to you too, Charles? Does that seem correct? Yeah, and what what we do to to calculate the really both the capital and the, and the margin, I mean. Unfortunately, I've been frustrated. Different people use these terms meaning slightly different things. But what we what we use is the Reg T requirement for a trade. So it's not we're not taking and, and calling capital the actual net debit that you did to put on a butterfly, for example, an unbalanced butterfly. We're actually taking the 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 margin that would be required under Reg T for this is how we calculate that. And there are some choices. You can set up your default as well as the specific. Uh, margin used and the PL basis used for each each individual trade. Okay. And you can, of course, come in here and you can build your own filters uh, however you want for looking at a specific month, a specific strategy uh, that you use or whatever. So you can slice and dice your data a lot of different ways. Um, and again, as Charles pointed out, you can also export all of that at any time if you want as well. Um, so that's that's basically the main reporting functions that I use. Uh, then, of course, you have the the help menu, which gives you a lot of additional information. Probably uh, the one that most newer people should go to would be the learning center here, where there's a series of different videos on how to use all of these different functions. Um, and so that would be something I'd recommend. And then um, this is the affiliate link here that will, uh, if you want to do, I believe Charles right now has a 30 day free trial of the software. So you can sign up there. And then Charles, maybe the thing to do also is to talk about the different uh, variations of the software, because I know I get different questions on, um, you know, why somebody would go with one version of it over another. And I'm trying to see where, um, Where's it going to show the different options here? I mean, I, I've only been in the one option, the fully loaded one. So your your best bet is to scroll to the bottom of the page and jump to our got it uh, website. Click on home there, and it'll take you to our our, our market website. And here under plans, you can see the different uh, the three different plans we have, and how much they cost. And there's a little summary in each of those boxes. And if you scroll a little further down, 
there's a detailed list of all the features and which ones are included in which plans. Uh, certainly the premium plan is the best. It has all the great features, uh, I think, <laughs> of course. But it describes, and it, again, it has little question mark icons that you can click on if you don't know what a particular feature uh, is or what it means. Okay. Um, so, and then I see a question just came in. Is there a way uh, to format, to load trades from an Excel CSV file? Uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to that one. So that's a Charles question. So I think what he's asking Charles is, could he have, for example, an entire butterfly trade uh, start to finish with all adjustments and load in that entire trade? Or do you have to do um, do you have to do, you know, the original opening of the trade and then import adjustment one, then adjustment well, two, et cetera? Yeah, e either way, the way you do imports, right now, the only import we have is from TD Ameritrade and it's filled order by filled order one at a time. Um, and we don't have a, a CSV import and uh, it has been suggested to me that uh, there might be value in being able to import because you can export your CSV file from perhaps your broker, perhaps one of the other softwares, and then want to import it in here. We have not done that. We might look at that in the future, but uh, I, you know, I don't want to make any promises on that right now. Okay. Um, and again, I will say that Charles has been very accommodating on uh, many different suggestions that people have given, not just me, but other people as well, that have shared thoughts and ideas with him. And um uh, so anyhow, if it's something that that he and others see value in, it, it seems to show up here in very short order. Our plans for modeling other instruments, SPY, ES, in combination with options combos. Um, so uh, Dave, first of all, I'll address my comment on covered calls. So one of the things that Charles is working at adding in here right now, it's all options. So I don't have the ability, for example, right this moment to put in uh, like if I get assigned FedEx shares here, I'm, I'm actually hoping to get assigned FedEx shares. So I structured this trade in a way that I might get assigned FedEx shares. So if I do, uh, I want to be able to keep track of those uh, 200 shares that I would now be long FedEx as well. So Charles has built stock into the back end of this, but it's not kind of at the forefront um, because he didn't envision it being something that was going to be real useful out of the gate. And he's probably right there. I'm a little bit maybe in the um, minority on that. But I do have a large retirement account that I do a lot of covered calls in. So he is adding the ability to have shares of stock in here. And then, of course, I can monitor how many times I roll or sell a covered call uh, or sell a call against my shares. And or if I get uh, the shares called away from me, etc., I'll be able to, of course, model the wheel. Um, so I think that's what was meant by that, um, modeling other instruments. That's a difficult one to do. Charles may have some thoughts on that, but if I understand what you're asking, I'm, you're asking if I have an SPX butterfly, for example, and maybe I only have one butterfly and I want to do a long call on that one butterfly, but one long call in an SPX butterfly is overbearing in most cases, it would skew it horrendously. So you're wanting to know if I can marry in one spy call against that butterfly, uh, that SPX. Or, or maybe even like one MES contract. Yeah, or, or an ES contract or something like that. Yes, okay. So I don't know the answer to that. I don't know of any other software right now that does that. Um, but well, in, you can kind of do it because you can... Um, Tell it, say, I want to buy five SPX, which you can't do. But if you had, you know, one MES contract is five Delta. So you could kind of simulate it, but it's not actually using the MES futures by itself. It's just pretending you're buying five shares of SPX, which obviously you can't do. It's an interesting okay. idea. You, yeah, you could buy SPY, I suppose, like that. But that's that's a level of complexity that I don't have now to, to model different underlyings in the same in the same one. And the futures, I I believe, as a matter of fact, I, I'm pretty sure that's what they just sent me a notice that they're not supporting futures in the API and they don't plan to. So I have shied away from that as well. I think some of the other brokers might support it, but uh, again, it adds a lot more complexity to the to the operation that we just haven't, haven't looked at yet. Okay. Well, Dave says he does that no and e at, at the top. 
Yeah, I, I've never figured out how to do that in ONE. I did look at that at one time. Um, I had to model, uh, well, I guess what I did do in ONE is I modeled my SPX butterfly and then I modeled my SPY. And then I think I could select both of those to be shown together in the same diagram, I think. Um, but but I, I didn't find an easy way to do it there. Um, but anyhow, it's not here at this point. All that said, you know, I mean, I think this product has been available to the public maybe for two, three months, and it has made great strides in those two to three months. So I'm sure uh, additional strides will be made uh, fairly rapidly. But um, I do have on the distant drawing board a possibility to compare two different two different trades together on the same graph, but that's that's kind of distant for the moment. Okay. And there was also a question uh, in TOS use portfolio beta weighted on the analyze tab. So uh, if I understand the question, Dave, you're asking, can we, uh, can I take all of these trades and lump them together to see an overall beta weighting uh, or a certain selection of trades? Is that, is that what the question is? I'm a little unclear. I'll say I have looked. That's another thing I have on the drawing board is to beta weight. I on the dashboard there is a combined uh, Greeks of your portfolio, yes. but they're all just adding up the Greeks as they stand. They're not beta weighted. But I have on the drawing board to do a beta weighting. Uh, it's not all that hard to figure out, but it's just on the drawing board. Let's say. And correct me if I'm wrong. Those Greeks on the dashboard too are a composite right here of. Um, all of the uh, trades across all three accounts. This yes. does not slice yes. and dice by account at this point, correct? No, that's correct. Okay, okay. So um, uh, anyhow, so hopefully that gives everyone a good overview uh, of the software. I will be using this again. Um, I'm doing a demo, I think, week after next uh, at the same time of kind of the trades that I'm doing in my trading group and things like that. I use Option Traders Assistant exclusively at this point and have for about five months now. Um, so anyhow, I, that will be kind of your next big exposure to it, if you will. Uh, combining trades, five uh, five trades, IDs in one that I manage separately. Uh, yes, I, th I think that's what Charles was just referring to, that that capability is not here right now where I can go in and I can select four or five of these trades and lump them all together in one big P&L diagram. I will tell you that I found over time that that was a little bit weird, uh, and it's weird in TOS, and, and I don't mean weird in a negative sense. I meant that it wasn't as useful as I thought it would be because it, it tends to toss in some sort of additional heavy weighting to those that expire earlier. So in other words, if I took a butterfly that had a whole bunch of uh, positive delta in it, and then I took one further out that was delta neutral, and I put those two together, the combination of the two is going to show a whole bunch of positive delta. I don't know exactly how they're weighted, and I'm sure they're weighted differently in different um, uh, software programs, because that's probably proprietary behind the scenes stuff. Um, but it, it had marginal use to me. Uh, if I do want to see these, I will just kind of share with you guys how I do it. So I can come in to my TOSS account. Uh, this is a little, I guess, off the record for lack of a better term, but I can come into my TOSS account here and you can see I use the TOSS function to also break apart all my trades. So each one of these trades, like each one of these class trades mirrors the class trade or mirrors what I have in um, OTA. So I can come in here and eh, let's see, that's covered. I don't know how to get rid of, oh, there we go. I can get rid of that menu that way. So I can come in here to my analyze tab. And of course, within TOS, if I still want to do this, I can select which groups I want to model. I can model, you know, one individual group or I can model, you know, specific, um, whatever groups I want, I can model in here and I can see how those all model up together. So that is still something that can be done. It's just not currently done in OTA. Uh, which cloud is the server hosted on? And what is the availability of the service? So that's all you, Charles. I don't know what you do and don't share in <laughs> well, that respect. We are, I, I, I'm not going to give out all the, the details of our implementation, but we are at a, a one of the large 
clouds that you would have heard of, the, the big one, and uh, it's scalable. It's you know, it's not a not a server in the in the back corner of my bedroom or anything like that. Um, and we do not off we do not guarantee any service level agreement at all, though. It's uh, it's been as yeah, reliable it's not your as server, can, yeah. but yeah, it's 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 not my <laughs> server, and we're totally dependent on data and uh, all that sort of thing from the APIs into the brokers. So it, it's. Uh, it would absolutely depend on what uh, TD Ameritrade or Tradier or E-Trade was doing as well. So we would have to pass that along as well. So the answer is we've been uh, pretty reliable, but no promises, no guarantees. And I would also say that um, in my four months, I think I had maybe one window of time that might have lasted two minutes. And it could have been on my end. I don't even know where I wasn't getting something to open. Um, but I could go directly into the um, uh, toss and I could execute whatever trade I wanted in toss and then just import it into my trade here. So uh, the one time that I did experience a momentary hiccup, uh, again, not saying it was OTA, but when I did experience that hiccup, I could still deal with my trade just fine. And then I just imported it. So um, unless there's any other questions on the software itself here, I think I'll go ahead and quit sharing my screen. And I had, a, uh, I had a quick question. I know, Charles, we talked about doing multiple accounts. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I know you, you, you're interested in that. Firing well, the same trade to multiple accounts, I think, because you can do. Yeah, like if you're, yeah, if you're trading, if you're trading, say, four or five accounts. You put one order in, say, OK, I want this many contracts and split it up to these accounts this way. Send the order and then it gets filled. It gets distributed to the other accounts. We um, we don't do that right now. It's something I've, I've got on the on, under consideration as to how we could do that. Um, it might might be a little tricky keeping track of them all, but maybe not. Uh, it just uh, for the moment we don't have that. You can certainly have all as as Steve has shown. You can have different accounts all combined and work on them. You can easily. Uh, the one thing we do have on that score is uh, the sharing code. Ah, yes. Each each trade is given a sharing code. It's assigned a little code when it's created. And you can use the sharing code one to share the trade with somebody else. So for example, Steve in teaching a class could send the sharing code out uh, uh, to everybody else in his all the students in his class. And by using that, they can immediately recreate the same trade on their on their screen and be able to trade it. But you can also use the sharing code for your own trades. So if you have a, a particular trade, you've just filled it, you take the sharing code, make a copy of that trade, and then you can put an order in to a different account for that same trade. So you can do that. It's you know not quite as smooth as having one button to, to trade a bunch of accounts all together, but it, it is possible that way. Well, just maybe a way to do it, say you had uh, just keep it easy, um, two accounts trading five contracts or so 10 total. So you would have the trade that you track one 10 lot but then when you set, send the orders, you split it up according to whatever ratio you set up. You know, mm -hmm. one account gets five, the other gets five, maybe one gets four, one gets six. But you're still trading a 10 lot, and that would be with the position you're looking at and tracking. That would be a little more advanced. Uh, I'll look at what it would take to do that, but we, we don't have a way to do that right now. Yeah, just uh, 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 food for thought. Something and we'll there... put in there. And, and I do appreciate it. We are, uh, as I will say, we consider the option traders assistant community really and people who are, are are using the software are members of our community and I look at us as growing this together and I really am anxious to have any kind of suggestions and thoughts and I've been getting a lot of them which I appreciate and that's how it's getting better and better very rapidly. Did you see the question about the interactive brokers implementation timeline? Interactive brokers is I hate to I hate to be to sound to, like I have to waffle here but they are quite a quite a, a uh, an organization to deal with, and it is taking longer than I had hoped. And at this point, I just can't promise any particular thing. I keep hoping it's going to be a few months out, but I, I I can't promise anything on that. So we're working on it. I will tell you too that uh, in my two years at uh, Option Alpha, when I was working with Kirk there, the whole time he was trying to get uh, interactive brokers connected, and he kept getting. Warm fuzzies. Uh, same thing, actually, quite frankly, with um, Tastyworks. Uh, he kept getting warm fuzzies, thinking he was getting there. And then the very next uh, message was, yeah, I can't give you an idea. So 
I don't know anything about that world, but but I do know that Charles' experience uh, aren't unique. Other uh, other software developers have run into the same situation. And disappointed as I am, because an awful lot of people are really clamoring, but uh, I, that, that's the best I can promise. We are a little further along with uh, Tastyworks than we are with Interactive, but both of those are still in process, and I can't give a definite date. So stay tuned. <laughs> that's all you can do, right? Yeah. Anything else anyone has? Otherwise, I'll go ahead, quit sharing my screen, and um, we can wrap up. Yeah, I think we uh, ran out of questions, so really appreciate both of you guys coming. It's uh, great to see the new kid on the block and uh, making great strides. Uh, really great work, Charles. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It's uh, It's been and continues to be a great adventure. So uh, I would encourage everybody who's interested for a, a free 30-day trial of the software, and that gives you all of the features, use the link that Steve put in the chat and... Uh, you can sign up there and you can also sign up for our mailing list to be uh, keep informed of, of things that's on our website. And we uh, periodically will have uh, webinars in which we'll show the newest features or, or answer questions or what have you. So I'd be happy to have you on those as well. And there was a, a question on the classes I teach. I do teach classes on butterfly trading um, and, and it's an alert service, uh, et cetera. I did put in a link there because I, I have a special link for the people from Aeromir, but I'll be giving a more detailed presentation on that in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. Look forward to it. All right. Well, again, thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, Charles and Steve, really appreciate it. And uh, keep us updated. Feel free to come back anytime. You're always welcome. Uh, friends of our community. And uh, we love to see new projects like this succeed. So best of luck and uh, hope things uh, continue to improve to, as they are. And uh, you get lots of good customers and good feedback. And the process just keeps snowballing and getting better and better. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Charles. And uh, thank you for uh, continuing to add to a great product. It's been uh, It's been excellent working with you on it. And I love that I toss out a suggestion or something as other people have and lo and behold a week later there it is it's like well it's like easter eggs on a weekly basis <laughs> so thank all you. right yep thanks guys all See right you next time thank you tom take care